Welcome to New Filmmakers Los Angeles. My name is Danny DeLillo and we're here at the South Park Center and I'm here with director Justin Shine with his documentary Left on Purpose. Let's take a look at the clip. I want you to understand that my suicide is consistent with a lifelong quest for the species and myself to have agency. That's the position of the pacifist or the resistor. And the baby boomers, more and more of them, will feel like me. Listen, congratulations on your film. Thank you. It's great. To, it's really great to be here. Well, it's a, a truly momentous story that you share with us. And uh, for those that haven't seen it, tell us a, a brief synopsis of your film. Well, you know, like many documentaries, it starts one way and it takes a turn that you're not mm -hmm. expecting. But I started making a film about a friend who was a you know aging peace activist, and I had always been interested in uh, the '60s activists, mm -hmm. and uh, I wanted to know more about him. And about six months into making that film, he told me that he was planning his his suicide. So. Mm -hmm you know, all of a sudden I had to really stop and think about whether I could continue making the film and whether it would be helpful to him. Uh, and it was really difficult. It was, uh, and the, so the film became about our friendship and our relationship and, you know, stopped just being about him. Uh, and I felt like if I were going to make the film, I needed to kind of step out from behind the camera and mm -hmm. it needed to be about this difficult relationship that is not so uncommon. People uh, deal with loved ones who are uh, in emotional pain all the time and uh, I thought it was an important story to tell, so. Well, <clears throat> with that being said, you know, thank you for sharing something so personal and noble about someone that was so iconic in a period of time where so much movement was being changed. We all really got to you know, embrace the greatness of, of him and, and your story and the journey that you have with each other. Now, obviously, you mentioned that you were fascinated by that mm. period, and it really was a wondrous period of, of change and a movement. Like, I, I, I watched it, and I was like, I, I wish I was young and experiencing that and the movement that it was. What did you kind of, like... You were young. I was young. <laughs> I was, you know, I'm, I'm still, still young. hippie or whatever. Uh, you know, oh. uh, but, uh, but no, did, what... what I mean, for you, you had a fascination with that kind of yeah. theory. What was it about that you wanted to sort of? Well, you know, I, gr I grew up in New York in the in the '70s and '80s, you know, a time when Ronald Reagan was uh, kind of really took the country to the right. Yeah. And there wasn't a lot of activism, and I, you know, learned about the civil rights movement and the anti-war movement, and I felt like that was really lacking. Yeah. Um, and when you grow up in New York. It, you see these characters walking down the street in Washington Square Park in the village who just are seeped in history and you could tell that they have an amazing story and so often you don't get to learn those, those stories. Yeah. I saw this as an opportunity to learn about this guy who was just so witty and, and interesting and had lived this amazing life. Um, and I think that what it's a great opportunity to have a camera and be able to kind of step through that door and, and learn about somebody. No, I mean, I, uh, truly, and you know, he's a really fascinating person, you know, and, and the, what the movements that he led and was part of and the people that he met, I mean, it's truly phenomenal, isn't it? This one man can just be a lead in so many different things. Um, you know, what was, it, what was it about him that you kind of like found so fascinating? Well, he, I mean, he, had, he said that he was kind of like the Forrest Gump of the, <laughs> of the, of the peace movement, yeah. being that he was, there and kind of played a part, but he was in the background. Um, yeah. He, he wasn't, uh, I mean, he had all his life been dealt with depression and anxiety, and so he wasn't the mm -hmm. Abby Hoffman or the Jerry Rubin who mm -hmm. led the charge. He mm -hmm. was the guy kind of conferring with them in the background. The young um, son hero, yeah. Um, but, you know, he was a hippie and a yippie. Mm -hmm. There's a difference. The yippies tried to turn the hippie movement political, yeah. and they used sarcasm and humor, and um, and he was really uh, had that in his heart. Yeah. And so when he decided that he didn't want to live anymore, he saw this film as an opportunity to kind of turn it into a spectacle, which 
you know, as a filmmaker, was very troubling. I, I didn't set out to make a film about suicide, and I certainly didn't want him to commit suicide. I, you know, he was became very much a part of my family. Yeah. Um, so it was a difficult position, but you know, as a documentary filmmaker who's worked on many films, there's always ethical problems. There's always yeah. questions, and it so rarely gets spoken about. And I saw this as an opportunity to to bring those some of those issues to the forefront. So, I think he is an extraordinarily brave man because you know I think we don't uh, appreciate just how much depression is is part of people's worlds and lives and, and everything. And you know I think brave enough to actually do that on camera. You know mm -hmm. as well. It's just unbelievable and for. You know, really, I mean, I, I obviously it's a, it's a very troubling thing, but for you as a filmmaker and as a human with a heart, what was that like for you to have to go through that journey? Well, first, I, I want to agree with you. I feel like, you know, Mayer kind of um, donated his, his sadness yeah. to us all so to, to share that because, you know, he allows us to see him really in, in some very difficult states. But, you know, as a person... You know, I, 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 I feel like I was no longer a filmmaker first. I was his friend first. Yeah. And it was important to me that I consult with his doctors yeah. and his friends and his psychiatrist to make sure that the film itself was, was not going to be um, contributing yeah. to, to this. Uh, and his doctors felt that the film was was a, a positive thing that it was giving him a chance to feel uh, appreciated. Yeah, I don't. You know, I, if if they had said, you know, uh, this isn't a good idea, I would have stopped. Yeah. Um, but then I found myself in this position where I felt like the film was keeping him alive. Yeah. That he was living for the film, and I didn't want to be making a film forever. Um, yeah. Just to course. keep him alive. So. Yeah. And I also was in this bind where I felt that maybe. He would feel an obligation to the film to complete this act. Yeah. So I, I was in a tough spot. Well, I, I again, I think it's um, you know very brave on both your points to you know to actually make it. But I, you know, I feel like because he, you know, achieved so much in 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 his early life and and, and and the support of the things that he did as well. He's almost. As sad as, as obviously what happened, he's, he's left a, a positive legacy of what he achieved in his life and for people to witness and see. And on so many levels, I feel like he's left a great morality for us all you know, to feel about people that we may know with depression, but also celebrating people's lives as well, which is what he did. Sure. You know? I mean, he sort of you know, mm. went out in a, in as sad as the, it's a particular thing, but you know, has that kind of David Bowie aspect of him that, you know, creatively achieved all of this and you know in his own right just felt it was the, the right time to go and only you know what, what mm. that feels like um, now going back to sort of the fact that this is a documentary you know what <laughs> it's a whole different situation for you here but what is it like you know to have your film like screen with an audience after what you've gone through as a person and as a filmmaker um, it's been really gratifying I mean yeah. I, I feel like a film like this uh, I don't set out to to um, prove a point or to uh, have an agenda. It, my yeah. my hope is that it brings up discussion yeah. about these issues and allows people to think about it. And um, you know, we're hoping to use the film to help train social workers and yeah. um, doctors. And you know, I, I've had so many loved ones of people who have taken their lives yeah. come to me and and thank me for the film, saying that it's shows a really kind of a real portrait of what it's like to be a survivor. Yeah. Um, That's got to be so gratifying, isn't it? Yeah. That you've, that you've done uh, that I mean, this is, that. unfortunately, men, mayors at age, the suicide rate has doubled in the past 10 years. Um, it's a real problem. Yeah. Um, and uh, it needs to be spoken about. Yeah. Uh, well, I, I mean, your work's just, it's, it's phenomenal. And it's so, you know, amazing intrigue. And it's, it's so great that, you know, through documentary filmmaking you're you know just 
change and en enhance the people's perspectives. Mm. And you know, we see we certainly need more of that. So thank you for leading Thanks. the way, Justin, and, and sharing your film with us. It's great to be.